Yo what's good people it's Jay Cactus, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a boom bap beat. In my last boom bap tutorial I made a Nas type beat from scratch and everyone seemed to love that one so I wanted to do a new one but showing you how to make them from a sample. So I'm going to be going through everything in this video. I'm going to be showing you how to sample, where to even find samples, how to make your drums more natural, what sounds you should be using and then how to mix everything. So yeah I think you're going to like this one and even if you don't make boom bap beats I think you can still learn a few things from it and then apply those techniques to your main genre. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. Alright cool, so the first thing that I want to show you is where to actually find your samples. And the best place I've seen to legally find your samples is Tracklib. If you don't know what Tracklib is, it's an online record store for sampling. I think right now they have like way over 80,000 original samples on there. And by original I mean actual songs, so not just any loops that people have created. And Tracklib have sponsored the video, so shout out to Tracklib, but you know I wouldn't say anything if I didn't mean it. I don't know any other service that does something like this, so I want to show you how it works. So when you log into Tracklib, you can see the catalogue on the side so you can browse by genre, artist, label, collections but I like to just go to all tracks because then in all tracks you can filter it by genre, you can filter it by the song key, the track type, the BPM, release year, everything. And when you find a sample that you like most of them come with multi-tracks which means they've got the stems which is crazy. What's even better though is the fact that you can clear the sample if you need to. Just to give you an example if you wanted to release this properly and you needed to clear the sample you have the license up here for example this one's £50 to clear the sample. But let's actually find a sample. I think I saved a few earlier but I'll see what else is here. Hmm. Oh, I think this is one I saved earlier. I think there was a part near the end that I wanted to flip. Vocal sound crazy. Yeah, this bit. Yeah, I think I could flip this into something mad. That's around 90 BPM too, perfect for boom bat. I'm just going to work with this for now and if I come across a point where I feel like I need to get rid of the drums, I'm going to download the individual stems. If you're liking the look of Tracklib, you can try it for free using the link in the description. Plus, if you use my link, you get 15 credits free plus 30 days free, which is double the amount you'd usually get. All right, so I've got the track here. I've dragged it straight into FL and we know from the website that it was 90 BPM. So straight away, I can just bring this down to 90. So for sampling, there's actually a few different ways you can do it. You can sample straight from the playlist. You can drag it into Fruity Slicer. I know you've got Slice X as well and a few other tools. So let's take this part here. Because I might chop this up for a verse and then use the other bit for a hook. So it's more triumphant. So the way that I like to sample is either directly in the playlist or just by using Fruity Slicer. So I've just pressed C to activate the cut tool, holding shift and then clicking to cut in a straight line. And then I'm just going to mute the other sections for now. T is the shortcut to activate the mute tool, by the way. But if I drag this into Fruity Slicer now, it's going to drag in the whole sample, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I just want to chop up this one section here. So I'm just going to bring this down and I'm going to highlight it with control and click. And then I'm going to press control, alt and C. I'm going to cut the remainder and then click start. And this is going to render that one section. So now if I open it up, it's just the loop that I want and it doesn't have everything else in it. Now I can open Fruity Slicer and when I drag this in, it's only recognizing that one bit, not everything else. So we've already got the BPM, which is fine. What I want to do is cut this by beat. And now I can just use my MIDI keyboard to find a chop. I'm going to record that in. So if you notice with the chop, what I kept on doing is coming back to that first one. And you don't always have to do that, but I find it to be just an easy technique to make it sound somewhat right. With the chops, I'm gonna quantize these. So I'm just gonna press Ctrl and Q and I'm gonna bring the velocity of the chops the same. Just extend these. And just to get rid of any clicks or pops because we're chopping the sample, I'm just gonna move the attack up. The attack is basically how long it's gonna take for the volume to get to its maximum level. So if you brought the attack all the way up, it's just gonna be like a slow fade in. So that's a bit too much. So I just want it up around about here. Yeah, around about there. 
So from here, what I usually do is play around with the pitch. So every 100 cent is a semitone. So if I go up 100 cent, I'm going up a semitone. A semitone is basically a note up on the keyboard. So we were working in, I think it was D flat. Yeah, D flat minor. So if I bring it up one, we're on D minor. Let's try another. Mm, I think I like it on D minor. So just stop one semitone. And let's say you wanted to change the BPM. You don't want it in 90, you want it something slower or a bit faster. What you want to do is double click in the sample, make sure mode is set to stretch, and then you can change the BPM. So I could bring it down to like 80. These ones changed there because they weren't in stretch mode, but you'll hear that this one did. Right, so it's still in time. But yeah, I'm going to keep mine on 90. No, I actually like this bit of sample. I think this bit's hard. So I'm going to keep them aside for now because I might chop them up later. So with that chop, the first thing that I usually do is clean it up a bit. So I'm just sending it to Mixer Channel 1 and I'm going to pull up an EQ because I know I need to save room for my bass, so I want to get rid of this bass. So I'm just going to bring the curve down and get rid up until about maybe like 100 hertz. Maybe even a bit further for this one. I like to do it somewhere around 100, 150 for now. And then when I add my bass in, I can always change that until it sounds right. The other thing that I'm hearing though in this one is just a real sharp, it sounds like a whistle or something, somewhere around here. So I'm just bringing in a curve up. Yeah, it's this section here. So I want to take that out. I think there's another one too. Yeah, it's those two notes. And I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to this. The sample's probably already got some in, but when I'm chopping, I just like to add a little bit. It kind of fills in any gaps. Around about there. And that's the only processing I'm going to do for now, but I might do a little bit more once I've got the drums in there. Let's see if we can find something in this chop though. I think I actually prefer this chop to that first one. And you know what? The first thing I feel like adding right now is a live bass guitar. Usually for boom bat beats, I like to do that. My go-to one is one in contact. And this is like the only live bass guitar that I use whenever I need one. I just think it sounds real clean. All right, I'm just gonna take the EQ off the sample because I wanna figure out what bass notes they had in originally. I think it's starting on G. Yeah. And then down to D. So they're the main notes that I want to use, but then I need to add my filler notes leading up to them. And I've actually just brought that on one pattern, so when I add the drums, it's going to be easier. All right, so moving on to the drums. Obviously, the first thing that you need to know about is sound selection. For boom bat beats, you don't really want trap sounds. You want realistic sounds, so anything that's taken from a live drum. It could have been edited and mixed. It's fine, but as long as you've got some kind of live drum sound. And let me see what packs I use. So for boom bat. I like Ill Mind, Alchemist, Beat Butcher, Cardia, DJ Pain 1. Let's just start off with a snare to get a bounce. And I actually like the snare in this one. All 
right, so I've done the snare in the playlist. I don't always do that, but I just liked the snare that I heard in that drum loop. So that's why I just chopped it out this way. And when it comes to drums, the key with boom bat beats is to keep the drums as natural as possible. So if you think about when someone's playing live drums, they're never going to get everything perfectly on time, perfectly on grid. So you want to get that natural swing. The snare is sometimes like the only thing that I like to keep on grid. I might go and manually move a few notes, maybe some of these double ones. So I could hold Alt and bring this over. Same with these over here. And you know what, I might actually change that snare because I like the sound of this one. All right, so I need a live hi-hat sound, something like this. Hi-hats for boom bat beats are something that you definitely don't want on grid. Otherwise, it's just going to sound way too robotic. And there's a few ways that you can do it. If you've got a MIDI keyboard or just any keyboard, you can actually tap it in. And I find that to be the best way because the velocity is going to be natural. A lot of them are going to be a little bit off grid and then you can fine tune it if you need to. So let's just do that. So if some are completely off like that, I could just hold alt, click and drag to bring it back a bit. All right, so moving on to the kicks. Same with the kick, we want something kind of realistic. Maybe something like this. I'm still getting the punch from it, but it's a realistic kick. And same again, I'm just gonna record something with the kick and then fine tune it. These first ones on the hit, I definitely like to have those on grid. With this one, this is a bit like a ghost note. And what I mean by that is, the first one is going to be at a point where you can't really hear it too much, but it's going to add swing. And then instead of having it perfectly on grid there, I'm just going to move that across. Let's try this. Maybe that's too low. And yeah, there's no secret method to the pattern really. I try and just go by feeling. So that's why I play it and record something in and then just fine tune some of the ghost notes like that. And now with the bass guitar, I'm hearing this one coming up in octave as well. Maybe these. Maybe then back down. All right, so next I want to add an open hat. So again, something that's going to match the hi-hat, something that's going to be realistic. I like this one. So with open hats, I like to do a couple things. I either like to have them just before a snare like this. So it kind of rides into it. The other thing that I like to do is have them on a kick or a snare. So like this. Right? So either one's fine. So maybe just these two here. And again, I can bring these slightly off grid. So the kick can hit and then the open hat. On this one anyway. You know what, I've just changed the kick to this one. I just wanted a little bit more low end out of it. All right, cool, so I've got the open hat in there and now I'm thinking, let's add a crash for when it hits on the first kick. So I like this crash here from DJ Payne One's kit. Right, what I'm gonna do with the open hat is come to the envelope and turn everything down except for the hold. I'll leave the release up a little bit because I want some to be short and some to be long and that bit of release is going to keep it natural.
Alright, cool. So one more thing. Maybe one more thing anyway. I wanna add a ride in. I'll just add a ride on every four step. But again, I'm gonna randomize the velocity. And just manually move some. Right, I'm gonna quickly mix some of these drums because I don't want to overdo it with the drums and I'm just gonna do some panning so I've got the crashes already panned to the right so I'm gonna pan the right to the left might pan the hi-hat as well just slightly to the right like 5% alright let me listen to the drums by themselves I like the way they sound. Well, let's send the drums to their own bus. And I'm going to add a little bit of reverb on the drum bus. Just so they're all sort of in the same room. Actually, let's not add the kick because that reverb on the kick just sounds a bit messy. What I could also do is add some RC20. And they actually have some drum break presets, which are pretty good. Just be careful sometimes, though, because some of the presets will put the drums in mono. And obviously, if you've panned it and then it's sending it back to mono, everything's going to be down the middle. I actually prefer it without RC20 this time. But I do want to mix the kick and the bass and I find the easiest way to do that is to pull up, let's just pull up an EQ on both. So I can see the kick, it's got quite a bit of low end. It's mainly hitting around 52 there. I could just dock that same frequency in the bass guitar, but I find that side chaining just sounds a little bit cleaner. So again, in the kick channel, I'm going to open Fruity Peak Controller, make sure that mute isn't checked. I'm going to bring that volume down here. So yeah, around about 50 hertz is where I want it to dot. So you could either copy the EQ over, so you've already got the point, or you could just grab another one, 50 hertz. I want to bring the bandwidth down a little bit. Then right click here, link to this controller, and then I'm going to go down to peak control peak, set this to inverted, and then put 0.5 here. And now every time the kick hits, that frequency range is going to dot. So that's quite a bit, so I'm going to go back to the peak controller. Right? So now it's only docking when it needs to dock. And you know what? I forgot about this other snare that we added. I wonder what they sound like together. I actually kind of like that, but I'm going to bring the volume right down. pan that one slightly to the left. All right, so I think I've got everything that I need right now. The only other thing that I might add is some kind of drum fill, maybe some kind of reverse crash or riser, just something in the arrangement like a filter to switch things up. So I'll finish that now and then show you the outcome. All right, so I finished arranging the beat and the only thing that I did here was just a little bit of variation for the verse. So I had that main sample chop for the hook, but then I took the same chop and just rearranged it in the playlist, which you're gonna hear in a minute. Apart from that, I just added a drum fill. So I started off with this and then I chopped it up and then just added some panning automation. So to go between both ears and then took a crash, reversed it, and that's acting as a riser. So I'll play it and talk you through it all. So in the intro, I've just got love filter and a different part of the sample. Or it's the same as this one, but not chopped. So straight away we're coming in with a bounce. And then I'm bringing it right here for some variation. And then a new bass guitar pattern. This is just to match the new sample chop.
sample was enough in this one. And we just come back to the verse, just like the first one. And then for the hook at the end, all I did was repeat it a couple times and then have the last one fade out for the outro. So I hope you liked the video and I hope you were feeling the beat. And like I said, if you want to try Tracklib for free, I've left a link to it in the description. And remember, with my link, you basically get double the free days and credits compared to if you went straight to the site. So yeah, much love to everyone for watching once again, and I'll see you next time.